Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be diving into the enchanting world of jewelry making with this very pretty whimsical dragonfly necklace. As you can see, it features a stunning patina dragonfly pendant, as well as some sparkly bicones and gemstone beads, all inspired by the beauty of nature. And we'll be using the beads that came in the curated bead box for the month of March. Now, if you haven't heard of curated bead box, I'll leave some information down below in the description section of this video, along with a coupon code and a link to the website in case you're interested. And if you don't subscribe, don't worry, you can still make this project. I'll leave a list of all the materials I'll be using down below as well. And you'll also see some timestamps in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. And don't forget that I always model my jewelry at the end of each video, so stick around for that. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Here we have the created bead box for the month of March 2024. As you can see, the name of the box is Ponds and Lily Pads. Now I did do an unboxing video, and if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link down below. So let's go ahead and select the items. Now I've already been into this box, and I played around with the beads, but I wanted to show you how I came up with my design. I knew I wanted to use this beautiful pendant. As you can see, it has a patina. The pendant itself is gold, but it has that green patina and it's kind of a bluish green color. So that kind of helped me determine what beads to use. And the ones that I thought coordinated really well were these right here. There are actually two strands here. And since I've already been into them, I thought I would put them in this bag, but I've got some six millimeter and some eight millimeter beads. I'm not sure what kind of gemstone the eight millimeter ones are, but I know the six millimeter ones are green aventurine. But anyway, there's also some nuggets here, as you can see. They have a daisy spacer at each end. And I thought those coordinated really well with the round beads. Let me just pull this pendant out. As you can see, the colors coordinate pretty well. But the patina is actually a little bit on the blue side. So I thought to tie that in, I would use these bicones. These are bluish colored. And these would add a nice contrast as well and some sparkle. And I didn't want to use any of these other ones. These green ones might have been okay, but I didn't like the size for this project. And these smaller ones wouldn't have coordinated either because the green color is a little bit different. It's a little bit on the bright side. So that's basically how I chose my beads. As you can see, these items look really nice together. So I'll save these for a different project. Here's my pendant. Here are the two strands of beads. Here are the nuggets. And here are the bicones. I thought this combination would work really well. Let me show you what else we'll be using today. We're going to be using some ball head pins and some craft wire. The ball head pins are about two inches long and they're pretty thin. I'm going to be creating a bunch of little dangles and I don't know exactly how many, but I'm estimating somewhere between 30 and 40. I know that's a lot, but that's what I'm thinking I'm going to need. Of course, it depends on the length of your necklace, but mine's going to be approximately 18 inches, something like that. And this wire is 20 gauge wire and it's in a gold color, as you can see. I'm also going to be using some jump rings and some lobster clasps from the Finding Starter Kit, which came in the box, but I'll pull those out later on. So now that we've gone over the materials, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by creating some beaded components and some dangles. I thought I would go ahead and show you both. These little ones are going to be the dangles, and they're going to go on ball head pins. Here are my ball head pins, and each one of these 8mm ones are going to be on their own separate piece of wire. And here I have a piece of 20 gauge wire, so let me go ahead and show you this one. Using flat nose pliers, I'm going to grab the wire about 3 eighths of an inch down, bend it, and now using round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the end so that it's flush, like this, and I'm going to form a loop. You want the loop to be centered and you want it closed. So now I'm going to load a bead, like this. I'm going to grab the wire again, right above the bead, line up the bottom loop, bend it. Using flush cutters, I'm going to cut off the excess, leaving about 3 eighths of an inch. And once again, I'm going to grab the wire with my round nose pliers, making sure it's flush, 
and I'm going to form a loop. And again, you want the loop centered and you want it closed. And the other thing I like to do is to line up my loops. I want to make sure they're facing in the same direction. And there's my first beta component. Very easy. And that's how I'm going to do all of them. And now let me show you how to create some dangles with these two. Let me slide on a bead like this. I'm going to grab it with my round nose pliers right at the top of the bead, bend it, switch to this part of the pin, wrap the tail around the nose of my pliers, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, I'm going to grab a loop with these pliers. These are actually crimping pliers, but I like to use them for this purpose because they grab really well and the tip is very skinny. And now using these needle nose pliers, I'm going to grab the end of the pen and create a couple of wraps. Using flush cutters, I'm going to snip off the excess and tuck in the little sharp end if you see one. And there's my first dangle. Pretty simple. And I'm going to do these the same way. Let me go ahead and do one. Once again, I'm going to grab the pin right above the bead like this, bend it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. Grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail, and create some wraps. Cut off the excess, and tuck in the little tail if you see one. Let me straighten out this loop a little bit. So there's that one. And that's basically it. That's how I'm going to prepare all of these. And I don't want to do all of them on camera because it would take too long. So I'm going to go ahead and do these off camera and then we'll come back and put the necklace together. So I'll see you in a few moments. Well, I'm back. And as you can see, I built my beaded components and dangles. Now I did have to redo the nuggets because they weren't mounted very well. The daisy spaces were very loose. So basically I removed the wire they were mounted on and used a fresh piece of 20 gauge wire. And I just did simple loops, just like I did on these. They're still a little bit loose because of the shape of the nuggets, but they're a little bit better than before. So you might want to do that with yours. So let me show you what I had in mind. I was thinking about putting the nuggets at the bottom like this. And then I'd follow it with some eight millimeter beads. And in between, I put clusters of dangles. So this gives you some idea. And I wanted to put the nuggets down here because we only received four of them. Plus they're slightly bigger than the other beads. So the rest are going to be eight millimeter beads. But anyway, this is what I had in mind. Hopefully I have enough dangles. I have 32 of the green aventurine and 32 of the bicones. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect everything. I have some six millimeter jump rings. These came in the box. They came in the finding starter kit. And I don't know if I have enough, but I did go into one of my previous boxes and I found some extra ones. So if I run out, I'll just use those. And here I have two four millimeter jump rings. These are from my stash. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with those. Let me go ahead and open one up. They're pretty small. I'm going to connect it to the loop of the pendant like this. Let me close it. And now let me open up this one. I'm going to go ahead and connect this one as well. So now I have two of them. And the reason I have two is because I actually want to reduce the movement of the pendant. 
which is really funny to me because usually I do the opposite. I try to connect things so there's a little bit of movement. But in this case, the pendant's so big, I didn't want it spinning around too much. So now I'm going to connect one of these six millimeter jump rings to these two smaller jump rings. Let me show you. Just like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and slide on one of these nuggets. Let me go ahead and slide on another one. And close my jump ring. So this is what we have. I think it looks really nice. And when I hold them like this, you can see that the pendant doesn't spin around too much because of the two little jump rings. I hope that makes sense. So now I'm ready to connect some dangles. Let me go ahead and open up one of these jump rings. These jump rings are cut so well, you can't see where the gap is, where the opening is. Let me open it up. I'm going to slide on this nugget like this and now a green adventurine and a bicorn. Whoops. And now this nugget Another green adventuring. And a bicorn. Hopefully I won't drop anything. And now let me close it carefully. So this is what we have. I think it looks super cute. Let me show you again. I'm going to slide the jump ring onto this nugget. And now green adventuring. And now bicone. And now one of these eight millimeter size beads. Another green adventuring. And another bicone. It is a little tricky doing this because you don't want to drop the dangles. There's not a whole lot of space there. Let me close up the jump ring. And these jump rings are really tough. So now we have the eight millimeter bead and the dangles connected. And I think you get the idea. Let me just do one more with you. And then I will have to do the rest off camera because it'll take too long otherwise. Let me open up this jump ring. Slide the eight millimeter bead into it. And now a green adventuring. And now a bicorn. And now this eight millimeter bead, another green adventuring, and the other bicorn. Close up the jump ring.
So that's what we have so far. And you're probably wondering why I didn't connect the nuggets directly onto the loop of the dragonfly pendant. The reason I didn't want to do that is because I wanted to create some space between the dangles and the pendant. In other words, I didn't want the dangles to hit the pendant. So anyway, guys, that's how I'm going to connect the entire necklace. I'm going to link these two nuggets, the eight millimeter beads with a cluster of dangles in between. And I'll see how far I can get and whether or not I have enough dangles here. Unfortunately, the box only came with 32 of the green adventurine, so I am a little bit limited. But let me go ahead and do the rest off camera and I'll show you how far I got and we'll measure the necklace. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I've connected everything and I think it looks adorable. But anyway, guys, as you can see, I have clusters going all the way up to this point and then I finished it with eight millimeter size beads. I just thought having smooth rounds at the top by the clasp would be a little bit more comfortable. Plus I didn't have enough clusters to make each strand nine inches. So that was a choice I had to make. But the extra dangles didn't go to waste. I actually made an earring, as you can see. I used one of the 10 millimeter beads from the box and then I attached six little dangles at the bottom. And I'm gonna show you how to make this in just a few moments. So let me go over the details with you. I used a total of seven clusters and each cluster has two bicones and two six millimeter green adventuring beads. Of course, I have the four nuggets at the bottom and there's a total of 10 of the eight millimeter size green gemstones. And I'm saying green gemstones because that's how it was listed on the box. The description didn't specify what kind of stone it is. And each strand measures nine inches in length. So that gives you some idea if you're gonna make a necklace like this for yourself. So now let's go ahead and attach the clasp. Here's a clasp and two six millimeter jump rings. They came in the box and this is very easy to do. But I'm gonna show you anyway, because I know I have some beginners watching this tutorial. Let me open it up. Now this necklace does have a front and a back. So if you're right-handed, it's always best to attach the clasp on the right side. And of course, if you're left-handed, you would attach it on the left side, but ultimately it's personal preference. Let me go ahead and slide the clasp on. And now I'm gonna attach it to this strand. And now let me open up this jump ring. and attach it to this strand. So there's my beautiful dragonfly necklace, nature inspired. I hope you like it and I hope you can make your own. Let me go ahead and get the materials for the earrings now. And here's one earring. Here are the materials for the other earring. Now the earwire hook came in the finding starter kit and it's probably a base metal. So if you're allergic to that, you might wanna use stainless steel or something else. And as you can see, I've already mounted it on this side. I've got the 10 millimeter size bead on wire and it's 20 gauge. And I just did some simple loops and slid in the earwire hook. And here are my six dangles, three bicones and three green adventurine. And I have two four millimeter size jump rings. Actually, now that I think about it, I only need one. So let me go ahead and assemble it. I'm gonna open up this loop and slide in a green adventurine, a bicone, and another green adventurine. Let me close it. And now let me open up this jump ring. I'm going to slide in a bicone, a green adventurine, and now I'm going to slide it onto the loop of this component. And it doesn't really matter where on the loop you slide it. Let me see if I can find a spot. I'm going to slide it in right here, I think. And now the bicone. And let me see if I can close it without dropping anything. It is a little tricky.
but I think I got it. So there's the earring. Isn't it adorable? I think it's super cute. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, I'd like to go ahead and put this jewelry on for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.